Enterprise. Here is an investigation paper, quite a recent one from June 2019, about uh, frog jumping, seeing sequences, seeing patterns, as all investigations are about the patterns, but they're not all about frog jumps. Uh, this investigation looks at the number of different ways that a frog can jump between stones in a line. The stones are always one unit apart, so one unit always between one one between stones always one unit apart the frog always jumps from left to right and it always jumps from the first stone to the last stone so it starts on the stone furthest towards the left and ends up on the right the diagram shows a frog sitting on a stone in a pond this frog has a jump length of one unit. This is enough to move from one stone to the next stone. So it goes from the first stone to the last stone. In this case, but here it goes first stone, second stone, last stone. There is only one way to jump between the stones. So when you have a jump length of one unit, your only option is to just go to the next stone, the next stone after that, and so on. It's, it's the only way you can do this. Uh, there's only one way to jump between three stones as well. So when there are more than three stones in a line, there is always only one way for the frog to jump from the first stone to the last stone. So you just go from left to right, jumping on every single stone. Okay, that is the first frog. A different frog has a maximum jump length of two units. There is still only one way to jump between two stones. So with two stones, even if you have a maximum jump of two units, you can't use it because you'd end up missing the stone and landing in the water. There are now two ways to jump between three stones, however. So when you've got three stones, you could either go um, one, one, or you could do the whole thing in a two unit jump, right? So you've got different options for your jumping, more combinations. Complete the diagram to show the three ways that this frog can jump between four stones. So between four stones, you could go one, one, one. So you could do it in ones, so three ones, or you could do it in twos and ones. So you could go two and a one, or a one and a two. And we should make sure that we put the arrows on and try to represent it in the same way that it's been presented to us. So you could do a two and then a one, or a one and then a two. Complete the diagram to show the five ways that this frog can jump between five stones. But you need to think about how far you've got to jump. So to get from the first to the last, you've got five stones, but you've only got to do one, two, three, four units of length. So the actual jump length total, or combined length, is four. You don't need a combined length of five. So you're thinking different ways to make four and your options are well it can either jump one or two so you're thinking with ones and twos and moving them around if necessary what combinations can we make four with so what you could do is do two and a two so you could do a two and a two so that's one and then you think about the ones and the two so you could have a two ones and a two and that could happen in different ways so you could go one two ones and a two so one one two that's one way to have two ones and a two or you could have a one and then a two and then a one like that or you could do the two first you could do a two and then a one and then a one so that is all the different ways that this particular frog with a maximum jump length of um, three units can jump between five stones The table shows the number of ways to jump between stones when the maximum jump is two units. I mean, the maximum jump length is two units. So it says number of stones, two, there's only one way to do it. Three, there's two ways, four, there's three ways, and so on. The numbers in the last column form a sequence, complete the table. So when it tells us it forms a sequence, what it doesn't want us to do is to draw some diagrams and work it out like that it wants us to look at what's going on in the sequence so looking at this you can see one two and then three two three and then five three five and eight so it's a very uh, famous uh, see type of sequence it's a fibonacci type pattern where you add previous terms to get the current term so one plus two gives you three 
2 plus 3 will give you the 5. 3 plus 5 gives you 8. 5 plus 8 gives you 13. So if we carry on like that, well, 8 plus 13 is going to give us 21. You can use the calculator if you need it. And then 13 plus 21 will give us 34. Write down a rule to find further terms. So what it doesn't say is an nth term. The nth term would be um, not possible. Um, it just says a rule to find further terms. Basically, just write down what you did. So really, it, these questions would almost be the other way around. Add the previous two terms. Or well, the last two terms, we add them to make the next term. Something like that. But you'll get quite a lot of leeway. As long as you show that you know what's going on, you'll get some leeway in the phrasing and the tenses or something. Okay, another frog has a maximum jump length of three units. There is only one way for this frog to jump between two stones. There are two ways to jump between three stones. There are four ways to jump between four stones. So these are the same the same three ways as in 1A and one new way. Draw the new way on the diagram below. So this is between four stones. We should probably have a look at 1A. So that is here. We were jumping between four stones here and we had three ways. So it was 1, 1, 1. It was uh, 2, 1 and it was 1, 2. So we need to consider something else well it's got a maximum jump length of three so we could just go one two three we could just do the whole thing in one jump that is the new way because this new frog has um, a different jump available a three unit jump there are the same five ways as in question 1b to jump between five stones and some new ways draw diagrams to show the new ways so for 1b we were jumping between five stones so we've considered all the possibilities when we can do jumps of one or two so there were these five ways here so one 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 and then the two two and then three different combinations with a two and a one so our new ways are going to be ways that utilize the the new jump of um, a three units so thinking about that let's draw some stones three four five Remember, there's five stones, but there's only got to do a jump of four to get there. So think about the threes and how threes combine to make a four. So a three and a two isn't going to work to make a four. When I say a four, I mean one, two, three, four. That's how far the frog has to jump in total. So really, you can only combine a three with a one. So you could go three and a one. Or you could do a 1 and a 3. So they are going to be the only new ways because 3 doesn't combine with um, 2 to get a 4 is, is what we need. Okay. All right, 2C. The table shows the number of ways to jump between stones when the maximum jump length is three units. So it gives a number of stones and a number of ways. The tables in the last column form a sequence. Use your answer in part B to help you complete the table. Right, so for part B, remember when maximum jump length of uh, three units and there's five stones, what well, we were told what it, we worked out really there were five ways but we've just we can just get them from here there were five ways involving jumps of one and two plus two ways involving a three so that's a total of seven so seven can go in there and then it says use that plus the fact that it forms a sequence to to fill in the rest of the table so we need to think about is something else going on so is one plus two three, one plus two is three that doesn't work two plus four is six that doesn't work um four but it's not far off is it so two plus four plus seven what about one plus two plus four if we if we try and do another sort of fibonacci related thing where we add previous terms you can see that one plus two plus four one plus two is three plus the four is seven 
interesting. Does it keep working? Well, what 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 7 is 13. So that looks interesting. Um, so to get the 24, if this was going to work, it would be 4 plus 7, which is 11, plus the 13, which does get to 24. So it looks like when you have a maximum jump length of 3 units, you can add the previous 3 terms to get there, which would mean that this 8th term would be 7 plus 13 plus 24. Well, 7 plus 13 is 20. 20 plus 24 is 44. The last term here would be uh, 13 plus 24, which is um, 37, plus the 44 would be 37 plus 4 is 41, 81. Okay, use your answering part, which we've completed the table, write down the rule to find further terms. So add the previous three terms. It's a very interesting uh, pattern. And it's just, it is a bit cruel because it's really relying on your uh, sort of clarity of thought and pattern spotting to just spot what's going on. Because if you don't notice this, you are really um, in a difficult position as far as the investigation goes. I know you get a bit of time to have a think about it. But it, it does really rely on you having a good, a good nose for uh, pattern sniffing. The table below... The table shows the number of ways to jump between 2 and 9 stones when the maximum jump length is 1 to 8 units. Right, so we've got a lot of information. Complete the table. So have we got any information that we have previously? So maximum jump length. We have got data when the maximum jump length was 2 and 3. We have done that. So if we just look at our last table, well that was 3 units. And we've got, we know that when there was eight stones, it was 44, nine stones, 81. So we can get those in. So 44 and 81. Do we have any data for two units? Yes, if we go back a little bit more, we also have data for eight and nine stones for two units. So it's 21 and 34. 21 and 34 for four units we don't have but what we're going to do is see if there's the same sort of pattern going on so remember for when there was two units we had the previous two terms so two plus three was five three plus five was eight and so on when there was three units we added the previous three. Oh, there's one i need to put this in that was seven we added three numbers together, so 1 plus 2 plus 4 was 7, 2 plus 4 plus 7 was 13. We're going to guess that we add the previous four numbers when there's a four unit, so let's just test that with the low numbers. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 4 is 7, plus 8, 15. It works. What about for five units? Would we add the previous five numbers? So 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7, plus 8, 15. 15 plus 16 is 31. It looks really it looks really promising. So what we're going to do is fill in this last missing number by adding the previous four. And I think um, I may use a calculator for that. So I reckon this number is going to be the previous four numbers. So 8 plus 15 plus 29 plus 56. 8 plus 15 plus 29 plus 56. So that gives us 108. The table is completed. Uh, the numbers in the column for the maximum jump of four lengths form a sequence. So again, they're sort of asking this the wrong way around because I don't know how you would get that without without working out the sequence, but never mind. So write down the rule for finding further terms. So we add the previous four terms. Add the previous four terms. The terms of the sequence for a maximum jump length of eight units are 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So this really looks like powers of two. Find an expression in terms of x for the number of ways of jumping between x stones where x is between two and nine. Right, so let's go back to the table. 
So x is the number of stones. It tells us x is the stone. So we are looking at 8 units, so the last column. You can see, so when x is 2, uh, we go, there's one way. When x is 3, there's two ways. When x is 4, there's four ways. So this is about powers of 2. That 4 is 2 squared. So this is 2 squared. This 2 is 2 to the power 1. And this is 2 to the power 0. So this can be 2 cubed, 2 to the 4, and so on. So we're raising 2 to one more each time. But when x is uh, 6, we raise 2 to the power 4. When x is 5, we raise 2 to the power 3. When x is 4, we raise 2 to the power 2. So it looks like we're raising 2 to the power of 2 less than x each time. So that is going to be 2 to the power of 2 less than x. 2 less than x is x minus 2. So it's quite tricky, but hopefully you, you should spot powers of 2. I mean, 1, 2, 4, 8, 60. You do really need to know what that's powers of 2. And then go from there. Have a look. Try some numbers. Show that this expression does not give the number of ways for x equals 10. Right. So we're going to work it out in two ways and show that they are not the same thing. Right. The first way, the true way, we know that when x equals 10, because uh, we've got enough data Remember, when the maximum jump length is 3, we can add the previous 3 terms to get the next one. When the maximum jump length is 4, we can add the previous 4 terms to get the next term. So with 5, 6, 7. So when the maximum jump length is 8 units, we can add the previous 8 terms to get the, the next term. So 10 is going to be the next number here. So the true number is going to be, this is 8 numbers here, 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we add up all of those numbers, we will know exactly how many ways there are to jump between 10 stones when the maximum jump length is 8 units. So let's add those numbers up. That is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus one, two, eight. So that's the actual number. Remember, I just got those. It was off screen, but I was just reading this column. That was all. Just gonna add them all up. Okay. One plus two plus four plus eight plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 1, 2, 8. So that gives us 255. And then, remember the formula is 2 to the power x minus 2. Well, for, for 10 stones, x is 10. Well, it tells us x is 10. So when you do 2 to the power of 10 minus 2, which is 2 to the power of 8, and 2 to the power of 8 is 2, 5, 6. So you can see that these numbers are they're very close, but they're not the same. So um, does not give the right number of ways. Does not give correct number. Complete the two rules for finding the number of ways of jumping between x stones when the maximum jump length is m units. Right, so rule one. Uh, for x is between 2 and something, the number of ways is this. Uh, for rule 2, when it gets bigger than that, we need to do something else. So we need to now, we're now really generalizing. So let's have a think about this. So you can, what you want to see, when does this rule stop working? So the rule that we've got is this 2 to the power of x minus 2. You can see that this works up to a point. So it works. For, for the maximum jump length of 8 units, it worked up until um, 9 stones, and it didn't, work up af it didn't work after that. So if we look at this pattern of powers of 2, you can see look, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8, and then it goes wrong after, after this one. 
for 7, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 7 is not quite right, is it? So this one works up and so when the maximum jump length is 7, it works up until there's 8 stones. Let's have a look at 6. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 63. 63 is not a power of 2, it's an odd number. So when there's a 6 unit maximum jump length, it works up until um, 7. So it looks like it works up until one more than the maximum jump length. Remember, 7, it worked up until 8, then it went wrong. 8, it worked up until 9, then it went wrong. 5 should work up until 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here, 6 stones, and it doesn't work. So 8 looks like m plus 1 is where it works up until. So, so if when x is up until m plus 1, uh, it works fine. And the rule there is 2 to the power of x minus 2 gives the number of ways. So after that, so when x is bigger than that number, so when it's bigger than m plus 1, remember we now do it by adding some terms. Now how many terms do we add? So if you think about it, when the maximum jump length was 8, we added the previous 8. When the maximum jump length was 7, we added the previous 7. And think of the ones we actually looked at when it was 2. We added the previous 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. Maximum jump length 3, we add the previous 3. 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7, and so on. So we add the previous m. If the maximum jump length is m, we add the previous m terms. So the number of ways is found by adding the previous m terms. So it's quite complicated, but we are nearly at the end of the paper, so it should be quite tough. Okay, the final part. Part E. A frog sits on the first of 20 equally spaced stones, so that means x is 20. The frog has a maximum jump length of 18 units, so that means m equals 18, right? Find the number of ways the frog can jump between 20 stones, okay? So, we're obviously never going to draw, it's going to be a, lot, a very, very large number. We're certainly not going to draw 20 stones. And, as investigations often go, so it's not only impractical to draw the stones, it would also be impractical to continue the table. The table would be gigantic. So we now need to find what we've learned. This is where we really start to generalize and, and use um, our shortcuts and the things that we found out. So if you think, when would this formula work until? So formula, which is two to the power x minus two, x minus two works up to Remember it says right here, the rule 2 to the power of x minus 2 works between, when x is 2, remember x is the number of stones, between 2 and m plus 1. So m is 18, works up to 19 stones. Okay, then, so for 20 stones, we need to add last 18. Remember we add the last uh, m previous m term, last 18 terms. So, let's have a think about this. So, if you think about our table, so let's try and draw the start and the end of the column when thinking if m was uh, 18. So, we have m, 18 units. Then we're going to have x the number of stones so when x is 2 we know it's only 1 right then we know we can go all the way up to um, 19 so when x is 19 we know that this is going to be 2 to the power of x no, so 19 minus 2 this is going to be 2 to the power of 17 2 to the power of 17 write that down for communication 2 to the power 17 equals 131072 so this number here is 131072 right now 
We know that 20, the formula no longer works, but that's what we need to find. So it's going to be the sum of the last 18 numbers. So we know that the sum of the first 18 numbers is this, because remember this number could have been worked out in either way. This, because it works up till then, this is also this number, yes, it is 2 to the power 17, but it's also sum of terms uh, 1 to 18. Okay, so for 20, we need the sums of 2 to 19. Okay, so 20 is going to be sum of terms 2 to 19, right? Terms 2 to 19. We know that the sum of the first 1 to 18 is this. So the sum of the first um, 1 to 19, well, it's going to be this plus term 19. So our answer is going to be 2 times 131072. That would give us the sum of all of the first 19 terms, but we only want terms um, 2 to 19, but we know that term 1 is 1. So if we just subtract that, that's term 1, that would give us an answer. So we take this number, we times it by 2, and the reason why I'm doing that is because you know that term 19 is the sum of the first 18 anyway. We times it by a 2, and then we take away 1. And the final answer is 26214.